Hey there, let's talk about single action controllers. In this video, we are going to find out what is a single action controller, how to create one, and what are the pros and cons of using it. Let's dive in. What is a single action controller? Let's take this user controller as an example. Suppose that this controller can only have one action, that of listing the names and emails of all the users from a database. And that's exactly what a single action controller is. It is a controller dedicated to a single action. It can be create, update, delete, list, show, or whatever action your business needs. Now, you may ask, well, is that it? Do you just create a controller with one method? Well, yeah, kind of. You can think of this controller as a single action controller, but there's a better approach to writing this. So let's find out. Instead of having a named method, in our case, list, we can leverage the power of the PHP's invoke magic method. The invoke magic method is called when an object is called as a function meaning that when uh, our controller is called, the invoke magic method is also triggered. Now, we should also change the name of the controller to be aligned with its purpose. So let's call it list user controller instead. All right. Now, let's also edit the route of the controller because there is no need to specify a method as the action is assumed to be the invoke method. Now, let's save and see if our API endpoint is still working. And it does not because we didn't import the list user controller. And it is great. Now, before we move on, I'd also like to point out that there is an artisan command which you can use to easily generate a single action controller. And that is PHP artisan make controller user controller in my case, dash dash evocable. Now let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of using single action controllers. First, let's talk about the pros of working with a single action controller. As you may have noticed, a single action controller has only one responsibility. In our case, it is responsible for listing all the users from the database. In a less complex application, this can be a huge advantage because your controller has one job only, has a descriptive name, and it's easy to understand what it does, and is also easy to change. One more thing, I think a um, single action controller really shines when it comes to serving static pages such as terms and conditions, about, contact, and other similar pages. And finally, let's see what the cons are. I think that the single action controller approach is not well suited for RESTful applications. And what do I mean by this? In a RESTful approach, a controller should be responsible for taking care of certain actions for an entity. Let's take the user entity for example. A user controller should be responsible for CRUD operations for the user entity. But in a more complex app, you also have, let's say, operations for listing, showing, filtering, and so on for this entity. I think it would be a bad idea to have a single action controller for each operation because you'd end up with several controllers for each entity. So in our case, the user entity We'd have a create user controller, read user controller, update user controller, delete user controller, list user controller, and you get my point. And 
Moreover, if your business logic consists of multiple entities, you will have tons and tons of controllers booked up in your code base. And this approach is not a good idea if you're aiming for scalability in terms of development. All right, now it's your turn to let me know what is your take on single action controllers. Do you use them? When do you think is best to use them? Let me know in the comments. I hope you are more familiar now with single action controllers and you can put them to good use in your existing or new applications. I was Carol and I'll see you in the next one.